Real Madrid have assembled the Galacticos with Mbappe, Vinicius, and Bellingham. But managing the egos of three Ballon d'Or contenders is not going to be easy. And that's why Madrid's president, Florentino Perez, has hired me. But this is Real Madrid, the biggest footballing institution in the world. And that's why I've been given only a one-year contract. And these are my objectives. Win La Liga. Win the Copa del Rey. Win the Champions League. Perez is demanding something from me that Madrid have never achieved in their history. Win Winning a treble. It's the only thing Barcelona have got over them. And looks like he's giving me one season to change that. Here we go, boys. My final FC24 career mode. We're doing it with Real Madrid. Now, I know you guys are thinking, this is going to be like the easiest career mode ever. Wrong. Because this entire series is going to be played on ultimate difficulty. And you guys know I'm not particularly the best FC Run. player. So it's going to be a grind. Also, in the Champions League, you guys know in real life there's a new format. But of course, since we can't bring that in FC24. I've taken the most difficult teams Madrid have drawn in real life and created our group that way, which means, yep, yeah, we've got Liverpool, AC Milan, and Borussia Dortmund in our Champions League group. Oh boy. At any point during my Madrid tenure, if it's looking like I'm not going to win a trophy, I will instantly get sacked by Perez. But that's not all. Another thing we're going to have to deal with is the ego meter. Our three biggest stars, Mbappe, Vinny, and Bellingham, we're going to have to keep them happy. At any point, if the ego meter for these three players drops into the red zone, they will refuse to play for us and cause havoc in the media. So here we go. My job at the biggest institution in football begins now. All right, guys. Now it's time to actually improve this Real Madrid team. Now, I know it sounds crazy because this team is already so good. I still feel they're at a few spots with a bit of weaknesses, which Real Madrid in real life haven't addressed. Maybe because of lack of funds because they're paying Mbappe a fortune. But yeah, if we've got money this season. I would wouldn't mind getting an upgrade to Ferland Mendy. He's a good player. But there's a certain left back I think would be absolutely perfect for this position. What kind of money are we working with this season? And do 35 million. Okay, Perez is serious. He wants the treble. And there's a certain Canadian left back that I think if we sign... Oh, we've got a fantastic squad then. But before I could begin negotiations with Bayern, I had a certain Kylian Mbappe walk into my office. Hey, boss. Looks like we both are the new you guys on the block. I just wanted to talk about kit numbers. I don't quite like the number 9 that I'm wearing. I mean, I wear number 10 for France and Modric is basically gonna retire soon. Would you mind giving me that number 10 jersey? Not gonna lie, that is an absolutely crazy request from Kylian Mbappe. Even Ronaldo when he joined Real Madrid first, he wore the number 9 jersey because I think number 7 was still worn by Raul. We can't take away the number 10 from Modric. He's a Ballon d'Or winner at this club and until he decides to retire I think Modric deserves to keep that number 10. I'm gonna have to reject Mbappe's request here. But okay, that ego meter is going down. But you know what? I'm gonna have to make stern decisions like this because Mbappe should know he can't come in with stupid requests like this to me. But okay, now we can actually focus on improving this team. And I told you, the certain Canadian I'm talking about is Alfonso Davies. Yo, I had no idea his overall was just 82. Surely I thought he was higher rated. Oh, but look at that contract expired. I'm sure Real Madrid in real life want to wait until he becomes a free agent and then sign him. But now we want to win the treble this season and I think a player like Davies could help quite a bit. Okay, how much are we going to have to pay for this? Nothing too crazy because I did see his contract expiring. I think 40 million euros should do the trick. Okay, 42.3. We're Real Madrid, but still we're going to negotiate, boys. That's what Madrid do. We're not giving them a deal. 40 million and that's going to do the trick. What do we offer Davies for the wages? I don't think we need to do anything crazy because his overall is just 82. If we offer him like 80,000 per week, I think he should accept like without any signing bonuses because it's Real Madrid he's joining. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I did not expect the counter offer. Davies wants bags. Mbappe probably leaked his signing bonus to Davies because that explains his counter offer. But you know what? I want Davies at Madrid. We're paying it. And there you go. My Galacticos era begins with Alfonso Davies joining Real Madrid. We've still got like one 80 million left, but I'm kind of unsure where I want to put that money. We could get an upgrade to Carvajal, but he's been insane for Madrid last year. I like the center backs we've got too. Maybe our midfield's lacking a bit. We could do something about that, but for now, it's time to kick off our La Liga season. This will give us a good idea of how this team is clicking. Plus, we'll get to see how Mbappe and Vinicius together, even Bellingham as well, how all of them combine. Oh, but our first game
name of the series is against Atletico Madrid? This Atletico side is no joke. They've just signed Julian Alvarez. This is going to be a tricky game. Okay, right before the game, I've got a text from both Vinny and Mbappe. Boss, make sure you're making me the official penalty taker. Um, okay, this is going to be controversial because whoever we make the penalty taker, the other player is definitely going to be upset and these are two phenoms. Vinny and Mbappe are both probably going to be competing for the Ballon d'Or and penalties are a good way to get the stats up. In terms of stats, Mbappe is definitely better with pens. He's got 84. Vinicius is on 71. But Vinny has taken penalties for Madrid and he's come through. I think I'm giving it to Mbappe though. His ego meter is definitely going back up, which is nice to see. But Vinny's is going down. Oh boy. You know what? We'll work at a compromise. I'll give Vinicius the free kicks, even though he's got 62 free kick accuracy. And yup, that's at least getting Vinicius back in a good mood. But man, these two are going to make life difficult for us and we haven't even got to Bellingham's demands yet. But here we go. My debut for Real Madrid. I'm hoping the Galacticos can come through and help me get the win here because this is a massive game. Of course, don't forget we've got Alfonso Davies Whoa! making his debut for us, but that's not a good sign. Not gonna lie, Davies looks absolutely clueless Bruh. on his debut. Man is just running around like a headless chicken. And we might actually you continue. Need... Courtois, what is happening? What just happened there? Courtois couldn't catch the ball to save his life. Could I have had a worse start to my Real Madrid career? I don't think so. Nah, man. Ultimate difficulty has legit got me cooked. I am struggling. Mbappe, can he play that ball to Vinicius? Okay, that is a good sign. And now Vinicius... Nope. Looking to link up with Killian, but it's not clicking yet. On the counter-attack, this is where we can maybe shine Rodrigo of all players. We've barely mentioned him, but he could be the one getting us back into it. And he puts it wide. Rodrigo, come on. Vinicius finding a bit of space for himself, and that's a good save. Half time, and I'm not enjoying my Madrid debut, guys. I'm sure Perez is watching this and is absolutely fuming. Wait, things get even worse as Militao has picked up a knock. What is happening? We're going to bring on Alaba. Second half and this team needs to perform better. Oh, but it's getting really bad. We're just getting carved open, man. It's 2-0 for Atletico Madrid. The problem is both Vinicius and Mbappe just don't help at all defensively. I definitely feel like I'm out of depth here managing Real Madrid. Full time and this is nothing short of a disaster. My first game as Madrid boss and I couldn't get this team gelling. We've got superstars in every position but we just got embarrassed. Well, at least this is good to see. Militao's injury is just for five days. He should be back for the next game. But yeah, tactically, we need to figure this out. Because right now, it feels like I've got two players just standing up top. Rodrigo does a bit of defensive work, but not much, really. It's time to have a chat with both Vinny and Mbappe. Okay, Vinny, I know you don't like to defend, but the team needs you to track back. I mean, why don't you ask Mbappe to do that? I mean, of course, I'm gonna do that too. But it would definitely help if you would start contributing more. Are you questioning my commitment? And yup, things weren't going anywhere with Vinny. I tried having the same convo with Mbappe, but it looks like it's just made things worse. Their ego meter has gone down to the yellows, in fact. So, yeah, I think we're just gonna have to figure out a system where Vinny and Mbappe can just stand up top and do their thing while not caring much about the defensive duties, but I don't know how we're gonna figure this out. There you go, we're making Vinny Jr. stay forward. The same with Kylian Mbappe, and now we've just gotta figure out the rest of the team. Also, I'm trying to choose what tactical vision I want this Madrid team playing. Tekken Plus is probably my favorite, but I don't think we can make this work here at Madrid. For that, we need unrivaled commitment from like every player. I guess we'll have to do wing play because I think that's the only thing that makes sense here. We're heading to the Bernabeu though for the first time this season and we need to make this Mbappe Vinny duo work. All right guys, in this game I've given complete freedom to both Mbappe and Vinicius to do their thing, but I need to see results. Hey, where's our midfield? Like, this is awful. We've given a free chance for Mallorca and they've taken the lead. If we lose back-to-back -back games in La Liga, you know Perez is gonna start making phone calls to kick us out. Bro, this is horrendous. Maybe a set-piece could get us back into it. It's a good ball and Militao scores. I can't believe that we've got Mbappe and Vinny in the club, but the first goal scorer for us is Militao. I'm hoping this goal can now just kickstart our season because we need it. Nah, this is actually crazy. Why are we getting opened up so easily and it's another goal? for Mallorca. That was literally the worst thing that could have happened to us after equalizing. You know what? I think I'm gonna have to make a crazy change. Valverde on the right side and we'll bring on Luka Modric. This team is lacking so much creativity. There's Luka Modric. Those are the positions we want him in. Looks for Mbappe. Good link up. And now Bellingham's through. Can we score? Let's go. Jude Bellingham gets us back in it. Do you know what? So far, Bellingham might be my favorite player. He's not throwing any tantrums. Just doing his job on the pitch. Come on, Mon. 
Umbridge. A good delivery here could go a long way. Another shed beast and another Militao goal. Let's go. Can't believe Militao is my top scorer as of now. Oh, and there's Fede Valverde fighting down this right side. He needs a bit of help maybe, nope. but there's no help. Why is Mbappe not there? No, 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 no. I've got cooked. Courtois would have saved. Yo, that saved us three points there. And there you go. I've won my first game for Real Madrid. My days was that difficult. But I think I figured out quite a bit about this team and how to make things work, especially in that second half. It looks like all those plans are going to have to be thrown into the bin because Bellingham has just come into my office. Ross, after I scored that goal, I'm starting to feel like I need to be playing further up top. I don't want to be playing this box-to-box -box role and running back and defending all that much. Okay, guys, how do we make this work? Because if we keep playing Bellingham centre mid, he's going to be pissed. That ego meter will drop and it'll go into the red zone and yeah, we'll have problems then. I think the only way we can figure this out is by going to like Zidane's iconic formation. This is what he used at Real Madrid, the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. This is what even Ancelotti used quite a bit. And okay, this might be the only way to satisfy all three of our superstars' demands. Vinny up top along with Mbappe both being given complete freedom to not track back. Bellingham of course playing in a more attacking role. We'll need an additional midfielder to make this work and that's going to have to be Luka Modric for now. But yeah, this does leave out Rodrigo which is going to give us another problem because he's not going to want to be on the bench. But I don't think we've got a choice. This is Real Madrid. Rodrigo should know what he signed up for. I think he's going to have to be like a super sub for us. One thing though that we'll need to do is maybe sign an additional midfielder because I I don't think Luka Modric is going to be good enough throughout the season. He's going to have his moments, but he's he's not going to be fit enough to play every single game. We need to add like a creative midfielder. The money is there and I do have some ideas. Especially since Tony Cruz left. I think that's left a big gap in this Madrid midfield. And we need someone who can also play that final ball, but can also track back. And I think I've got an idea. Bernardo Silva. Bro, I see this guy linked with Barcelona almost every season. But why do I feel like he would fit perfectly into our Real Madrid midfield, especially with the new system we're trying to play? Bro, and that technical dribbling style, I think I could really use that against the ultimate difficulty. I know he's 30, but this is a one-season career mode where we need to be perfect, and a signing like him could be game-changing. And look at that defensive work rate. At least he's not going to complain about tracking back. Let's do this, boys. I think Bernardo's perfect. We are negotiating this one with, of course, Pep Guardiola, and he is not going to be doing any favors to Real Madrid. So, straight up, 100 million offer. They want Camavinga. I don't want to give them Camavinga. He's also a good option, by the way, to play in our midfield. But I need squad depth, so we're not giving him away. Instead, I'm going to once again offer 100 mil cash. And this time, Pep Guardiola does accept there's nothing he can do when there's that kind of money pouring in. I think contract negotiations should be smooth. Bernardo Silva's won it all at Man City. He wants a new challenge. And we're offering the same contract he had at Real Madrid. And there was no way he was denying that. This legit feels like another Galacticos signing. Bernardo Silva, the Real Madrid. And that's it, boys. Transfer deadline day is getting wrapped up. I'm actually quite happy with what we've done to this squad, except the formation, because I'm not sure if it's going to work. It heavily relies on Mbappe and Vinny constantly delivering. I'm just hoping they can play together. I guess we're going to find out in our next few La Liga games. Oh, by the way, I love this orange Madrid kid. It looks so good. Look at that, boys. Mbappe and Vinny are just standing up top, bro. <laughs> this is this reminds me of like Messi and Suarez and Inter Miami. Oh my days, it's gonna end up costing us and well, Courtois made a good save there. But the difference between like Messi and Suarez at Miami is that they're doing this at the age of like 35 plus. We've got Mbappe and Vinny in their prime, not willing to track back. Oh, but look at that. Bernardo Silva has just broken through. He tried to square it. Probably should have gone for goal himself. I'm not gonna lie, Bernardo is maybe the missing piece because look at that pass for Vinicius Jr. He's got it under control, but the finish was not there. Bernardo as well could end. Mbappe in acres of space. This is what this new system could be really nice for. But Mbappe, that went closer to the corner flag. It just hit me. We're yet to see a goal from either Vinicius or Mbappe. And I'm hoping soon we'll get to see one. Jude Bellingham, Fede Valverde instead is the one to score. Let's go. We're not yet getting the best out of Mbappe and Vinny, but this system, I think, just gives us the most balance. Bernardo Silva was just waiting for that run. Vinicius Jr., that was brilliant. And that's what we need to see. 
from our Brazilian superstar. And yup, guys, that first half performance was enough to get us the win. We follow that up with another good result. But no Mbappe goal yet. For this next game against Espanyol, I'm thinking I'll give Vinny a bit of rest. Let's play Edric. Also a chance to come a finger in that midfield. And come on, we need to maintain our good form if we want to top La Liga. One thing's for sure, Mbappe is going to have now a lot more freedom without Vinicius. And can he get his first goal for us? Of course, Killian can. It took him a while, but there's the Mbappe goal we've been waiting for. And also, don't forget, we've got a young Endrick in this team and he's going to square Easy. it for Mbappe. Fair enough. Bro, without Vinicius, Killian Mbappe is on another level. Oh, could be another chance for Killian Mbappe and he's actually scored a hat trick. This is a statement, boys. This is a massive, massive moment for Killian because without Vinicius, he's showing that he can lead Real Madrid all by himself. Good thing is, though, that we keep winning and Real Madrid at top of La Liga. And also, where's Barcelona? These guys are horrendous. 11th in the league. But we've got our fair share of problems because right off that game, Mbappe came out of the media saying that he's the best player in the world and it doesn't matter whoever else is on the pitch, he'll keep doing the job. Now, this has boosted Mbappe's ego meter. So that's good for us. Looks like Vinicius is unhappy that we benched him and his meter's dropping. This is something that we're just going to have to deal with throughout the season. But it's going to get really important for us to figure this out because soon the Champions League begins. And with us having probably the most difficult Champions League group of all time, we better figure this out. 